So I am uh, Alexander, if you guys don't know me, which I'm sure is most of you guys. Uh, I'm in cycle one, um, and so uh, I had recently graduated May of 2020 with a bachelor's degree in music at the University of Missouri, Kansas City Conservatory. <laughs> Um, and while I was there, um, I did a lot of like vocal performance, music theory, composition, and audio recording and stuff. And so I wanted to learn uh, more about just like, just doing some weird stuff. Uh, so uh, I was able to make a Nintendo Joy-Con as a MIDI controller um, using Max for Live. So if you guys didn't know already, um, uh, Nintendo Joy-Cons are actually uh, Bluetooth devices. So in your PC or Mac, you can just like have it connected and everything. Alright. So it's connected now. Uh, and essentially what I have here um, is I'm using a Max for Live device. Uh, so this is a max MIDI effect, uh, and so the um, original uh, object is called um, expression control, and uh, essentially what expression control can do is you can map out a bunch of just random uh, like automation or on and off or anything like that uh, through this expression control object, and you can route that through max MSP uh, and uh, have it work through any sort of like MIDI controller device you have. Uh, so who's familiar with uh, Max MSP? That was my old major in college. All right, cool. So uh, just to give you context on what Max MSP is, is it is a um, computer music language program. Uh, so if you've ever heard of something like C Sound or Pure Data or Super Collider or anything, essentially it's like you're programming your own sort of like like maybe synth or plugin or anything just completely from scratch. Uh, just from using just a bunch of objects and messages and everything. If you have any program programming knowledge, I'm sure that helps. I don't. Uh, so a lot of this stuff can be sometimes a little confusing for me. Um, so here we have just the original expression control object. Uh, and right inside of here, we have a whole bunch of stuff going on here. Uh, so this is essentially just what's inside everything. Uh, and inside that is something called, uh, this object right here called a patcher uh, MIDI logic. And so, Inside here is the actual routing for the Joy-Con. And so what the most important thing for this Joy-Con is this high object. Um, and the cool thing about this is you can, you can right click on any object. It can tell you exactly what it's doing. So this is what's called a human interface gaming device input. Essentially, you can just use any sort of like Bluetooth device and like have that on there and everything. Uh, and so, back here. Um, I have this through wireless gamepad too. Um, sometimes if you have multiple devices, you can just put, press this menu button and then it can reset. So um, before I've tried to use multiple ones and I've kind of have messages to rem remind myself which one is which. Um, so essentially what's going on here is uh, I'm routing that through this high object and routing it into uh, so several different objects uh, called this route object right here. And so essentially it's getting information. Okay, cool, it's working. Uh, <laughs> um, and so on the max console, it's gonna show, well, never mind. Um, on the Max console, it's going to show um, that 32 is connected to uh, the joystick specifically. Um, and why I have to have this like line object right here 
um, is because whenever I first worked on this project, um, I had to um, make it into more continuous numbers. So it's going zero through however big the biggest number is, 174 dot dot dot. Um, <laughs> And so um, it only had eight values, so it was discrete values at first. Uh, and so I used that line object and I used this thing to represent um, that it's working and it's working as sort of how it should uh, if you have a joystick. Um, and so you have this big object right here going over 48, 49, 50, 51. And in order, um, that's going through each of those uh, buttons. So uh, 48 is A, and this, this is working and everything. These buttons are showing um, that uh, A is in fact working and it's connected to max. Um, and so you have all this MIDI information, 0 to 127, on, off, all that other sort of stuff. Uh, so let's get back into Ableton. Uh, if you've ever used Ableton, how many of you guys have used Ableton? It's pretty great, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, eventually, I, I guess in a later cycle, you guys learn Ableton for a little bit, and apparently it's really cool. One four-hour class. It's actually kind of critical. Awesome. It's a great class. Though. Well, I'm excited for that. I'm only cycle one, so. <laughs> what was that? Uh, I've used both FL and Ableton. I will have to say I like Ableton a little bit better. Actually, a lot better, sorry. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, so already in the expression control object, I have a bunch of stuff routed in there. Um, so, for example, uh, let me pull out my notes real quick. Um, so the ZR button. Uh, gets this reverb and it turns it on right there. Um, so the R button does the auto pan, and then H, the home button, uh, it turns on the phaser. And also with this joystick, I have the frequency uh, going left and right and everything. Uh, so then I can change the frequency and automate that. Um, and then the rest of the buttons are being used to either trigger the delay or something with the delay. So the plus button, I have it for turning on the delay. Um, X, I have it going to fade mode instead of repitch. Um, and then Y, I have it going to turning on to the left part of the delay, A being to the right, and then B changing uh, the right two instead of one. All right. So um, I'm just going to have this kind of short, like two minute demonstration of using it live as a MIDI controller okay. using uh, just a four bar phrase of just this cute little, like, it sounds like a snowball fight, which is called snowball fight. Uh, here we go. <laughs>
So can can a switch device go uh, like export or not the export, but like can it tra talk to like both your Mac setup and a switch device at the same time? Like uh, can it send the same input? Well, I'm sure you're going with that. Like, <laughs> well, music comes out the game I'm playing. Is that where you're at? No, I want. Well, kind of. I want to see like if you were to like record the automation data while you're playing, like you could get some really yeah. interesting randomized patterns. I like that. As far as like connecting it to the Mac, or can you connect it to your Switch and the Mac's uh, MSP code at the same time? I don't know. I I feel like you should be able to do that. Uh, I haven't tested that out actually. Would that would be really interesting. Come down to can you pair the device to two different sources at once? Which yeah. I'm not sure you can yeah. do with Bluetooth. Yeah. Darn. But that's a cool idea. I like what yeah, you have. Right. Okay. My question yeah. was. Uh, do you deal with latency at all with that? I know like with, uh, I had Bluetooth headphones on in the Zoom class earlier and there was like almost a half second delay between when I would watch my instructor say something on the Zoom call and when I would hear him. Is that something you deal with with like the specific <laughs> like, delay where it's like a quantized thing where you're kind of trying to keep time? I, I haven't dealt with any latency personally. Um, that's not to say that it doesn't exist, but maybe if I have some sort of parameter, it might affect latency. Maybe something that's like uh, has a lot of CPU usage, but as far as I've seen so far, no latency. So yeah. Uh, can you use any type of controller? What was that? I'm sorry. I said, can you use any type of controller? Uh, I think so. I know this works with um, just regular Joy Cons. I have tested this on like third-party Nintendo. Uh, um, controllers, I would imagine that you would be able to uh, plug in like Xbox or PlayStation or anything like that, as long as it's Bluetooth compatible. What about Atari? Hey. What was that? What about Atari? Hey. Guitar Hero? Like the Atari. Oh, oh an, at an Atari? Uh, if it's Bluetooth, then I would imagine you would be able to. Uh, you know, those classic or Atari or Bluetooth controllers. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah. So I think